In this video, we're going to talk about hater bars and the hater bar chair side pickup process. Chris, walk me through everything we've got here on the table. Great. So what we have here is a hater bar case. The hater bar is the most widely used retentive element on bars in the world. Mm -hmm. It's basically a system where a clip snaps over the bar mm -hmm. to hold the prosthesis in place. So what we have here is the parts we need for a chair side pickup. We have the perma block blockout material. We have the gun for expressing out the perma block. We have the most important part of the hater bar system for chair side pickups, the green processing spacers. We have the metal housings, which we're going to want to use creates and provides a more accurate, reliable seat than putting the clips right in acrylic. Also saves a ton of time when you're replacing the clips down the line. Okay. And of course, at the end, we have multiple retentions of the hater clips. Uh, that's what I was asking. What's the variation between these colors? Sure. So the white is the weakest. Yellow is the standard, the most popular. If a patient wants more retention or if the retentive area of the bar starts to wear down, we have a red clip. Mm -hmm. And then the blue clip is designed with a smaller internal diameter, 1.5, to compensate for severe wear on the bar itself. Okay. So this way you would only use as a salvage clip if the red was not providing retention. Okay, that makes sense. So what we're going to do here today is the first thing we want to do is we want to express out our blockout material, mm -hmm. and this is being done chair side, because we want to eliminate any undercuts underneath the bar. If there's any undercuts where acrylic can sneak into, the prosthesis will lock into place, and there's no way to remove it besides drilling. It's the worst phone call we get. Okay. <laughs> this material is fantastic. The permablock works wonderful. It's non-water soluble. It holds in place. There's no setting time, no curing time. I'm going to express it out and push it into the undercuts. Make sure all the undercuts are blocked out. It seems it really does seem quite simple, actually. Very simple. Just press the excess in there. Make sure it's not in the retentive area. And this doesn't need time to set or anything else? No. Once you express it out, it's good to go. And just in case we get any excess acrylic back here, the blockout procedure is definitely better safe than sorry. Okay. Second procedure is I'm going to take one of the green processing clips, and I want to cut this down to the height of the bar. When I snap this down into the area, I am going to pick up the final clip. It's got little wings that I want to open up the legs on a little bit here. There we go. I'm going to snap it down onto the bar. Okay. You can tell that this is too high because it doesn't want to seat all the way and it starts to spread. So if the green clip is too high, it's a very easy procedure. I'm going to shave down a little extra off the wings here. Mm -hmm. You can take a blade, a barred parker, scissors. I find taking That's very a burr is the simplest, easiest way. Peels right off. Acrylic is around the flanges of the clip. The clip flange does not have the free space necessary to flex and is thus pressed inward. This makes insertion and removal extremely difficult causes premature clip wear and breakage. The clips will often roll in or pull out of the housing and stay on the hater bar. When the processing spacers are used, you can see the free space that is created, allowing the flanges of the clip to flex outward over the height of contour of the bar during insertion and removal. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a housing. We have two different styles of the metal housings. One has longer wings. It's shorter. So now that I have the housing on top of the green processing clip, I have my block out done. To chemically activate the top of that housing and get a better cure, I'm just going to paint a little bit of monomer on top of the housing. Mm -hmm. And the monomer is going to activate. You got it. While I let that dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seat my prosthesis down, make sure it can seat. There's no premature contact. If I want to, I could put some indicating paste on the inside to make sure that there's no premature contact. 
since we're going to be using self-curing resin, I want to drill an escape vent. Depending upon the patient's smile line, if the patient shows a lot of the pink of the denture when they smile, I'm going to come from the lingual. If the patient doesn't show a lot of pink, I'm going to come from the buccal surface. Why is that? The patient will play with that little hole in the lingual even when it's backfilled. So I'm just going to cut a little tiny skate bent through here into where I'm going to be picking up the acrylic. So that way if we put too much acrylic in here, instead of flowing down and wanting to lock underneath the bar, it'll come out through this little hole. So at this point, I'm going to come in. I've already relieved sufficient space inside the denture where I want to pick up the clips. I'm going to take the my brush again, paint a little bit of monomer to the area I want to add acrylic. Mm -hmm. And at this point, while I let that dry, I'm going to mix up a little bit of self-cure resin here. So when we talk about a chair side pickup, the laboratory can pick up the clips or the dentist can pick up the clips. When the laboratory picks up the clips, there's one solid, nice block of acrylic holding the clips into place. Mm -hmm. However, you're dealing with the variables, which can be very inconsistent, of impression, of the stone you're using, of the impression material. So sometimes it cannot be as precise as working on the actual bar in the mouth. However, when you're working in the mouth chair side, it is more difficult because you are working on a live patient. The block out is key. You never want to lock it into place. And thirdly, it, it takes more time for the dentist to do it chair side. So there is a trade-off for both techniques. Now it looks like our acrylic is ready. What I'm going to do is put a little bit here on top of the housing. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to paint a little bit inside a little dab here inside the denture. You know it's got a nice doughy consistency here. So when I seat this down, if I'm working in the mouth chair side, I want to snap it into place. You saw the excess acrylic come out through the escape vent. Absolutely. So the big thing is I don't want to have the patient come into full occlusion in the posterior. On a case like this, if you compress the soft tissue back here, then it's going to ruin the housing at the front. It's going to come up. It's going to rotate. Mm. But if we keep finger pressure over the attachment area, while this cures, it'll hold the attachments into place and eliminate that movement. I'm right about how long does it take for this to cure? You know, you're going to want to keep finger pressure over this. You can have little cotton rolls, have the patient come into, you know, incise over this very gently. But you're going to want to hold this here, especially if you're working with self-care, for about 7 to 10 minutes. Okay. Unless you're working with a quicker set material. The other option is you can use a chair side light cure material that you can probably do this in 3 minutes. Okay. So now we've, uh, we're have we going to keep this uh, 7 to 10 minutes until it sets. What do we do with the uh, the piece that's coming out that front little hole? So we're just going to go ahead and let that set because we're going to go ahead and polish that and remove that afterwards. Right, understood. All right, Chris, what's the next step? So you can see here where the excess material started flowing out through here. Yes. We clean that up. Mm -hmm. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove that green processing clip. Right. We can take a blade and make an incision down it and pull it out. Or if you have strong fingers, you can take a pair of pliers, uh, tweezers, pull it right out like this. Okay. So that's the one that's sort of, as it were, the, the holder, the space holder that's going to be disposed of. Exactly. And you're going to replace it with one of those colored uh, clips that we looked at before, the hater bar clips. Correct. So when we take a look at the hater bar clips, we're going to choose the retention that fits the patient's needs best. Okay. On a case like this where we have three hater clips, I'm probably going to start off with the yellow one. Okay. Standard retention. All I did here is I took the clip, I snapped it on the end of the insertion tool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to snap this clip into the metal housing we processed into the denture. Then at this point, the clip is in place. Try it back in the patient's mouth. We're going to come back. We're going to polish, remove any excess material, and we're done. So when you're pushing it into the mouth like that, does it feel like it kind of clips in? When Absolutely. It snaps onto the bar correctly? Is this kind of a good clunk? You're going to hear that nice audible snap when, you're, uh, when the clip goes into the housing and also when the clip goes on the bar. All right, and it's as simple as that. Once you're done, it's in, stays in, life is good. 
Life is good. All right, good. So anything else to say about the hater bar uh, chair side process uh, or the hater bars in general? Hater bars are very easy to work with if you're using the correct protocol and procedures. Again, the green processing clip is key for chair side. Mm -hmm. Using permablock to eliminate the, any locking in of the acrylic is key. Um, it can be very easy when you use the correct components. All right, that makes a lot of sense, thank you. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about the Hater Bar chairside pickup process or any of the Hater Bar components, please visit us online at preek.com where you can uh, order the particular parts, you can reach out to our technicians if you'd like more advice or into our customer service process. Thanks very much. See you online at preet.com.